everybody. I hope everybody's having a wonderful day. I got a fantastic video I thank for you all today. We are on the Nine Landowner Project. Uh, we're working on Keith's property. We actually get a visit from Keith today, which is pretty cool. Working on some white oak trees on him. I uh, do cover spreading one open, a double heart white oak tree, um, and how to go about spreading open without busting uh, the wood. We get to cut with Derek towards the end of this. We end up pinched down on the west, southwest corner of Keith's property. And me and Derek gets to cutting together, which is pretty cool. And I do get some shots of him cutting and doing his thing as we move through the area. And mostly it's just kind of touchy, trying to do a good job by the house. Uh, what was a concern is right by the house. What did it make it to where if they look out and look through their property from the house or whatnot, it does not look... Mm, they see a lot of white and busted and that type of stuff. I wanted everything to look good through there. It was a lot of effort trying to get it right. And they're good landowners and they're real particular about how they do their woods. Because they spend a lot of time in their woods. So it was stressful for me to try to do a good job and turn a good job out. Because I knew it meant a lot to them. So this was one of the more stressful jobs that we've done in a while just because of the pressure we put on ourselves to try to make these guys uh, happy with the product. Trying to do a good job to where once we get down to leave everybody's, all, everybody's like, I hate them guys. You know what I mean? As far as letting them in there in your backyard to cut, we're cutting people's backyards. This is where they live. It takes a lot of meticulousness in things of this sort to try to turn out a good the best job we can doing what we're doing if that makes sense logging is not a pretty sport but you try to do the best you can in this situation anyway let's go in and see what you all think hope you all like this put out a lot of effort in this and i hope uh now, I hope somebody can take a little bit of something away from this. That tree might be 120. You can see some dead in the bud. That might be up close to 150. But over 100 years old, but under 150. You know. All right. I got news for you. I, I know people don't understand time or something, but the world's been here longer than 150 years. Okay? I don't. That tree was done. Look at the heart. This tree was done. Look at the heart of this thing. He is done. Look at that. He is done. You can't, you can't hug the thing. It's done. The tree's done. It's he's, His life is... And he's still useful. He can be put in I don't know how many homes that tree could go in. How many furniture, pieces of furniture, trim. You know what? I don't know what all this thing is. There's parts of this log going to go to Europe. To be in people's homes, stuff like that. I don't know. I don't understand how people can't understand that. Okay, you love trees. You love trees. Well, what about this one? This tree's gonna die with this tree standing over him. So well, yeah, it's a maple, I know, but I'm, I'm just being hypothetical here. But this tree it has got to move before that tree can grow. I mean, you think people have common sense about it, but they don't. I want to go ahead and apologize for the daggone 
Sunlight. The camera lens wasn't wiped off when I went into this, and that sunlight coming in looks crappy. And I don't have an ND filter on this thing at this time, so... Just kind of bear with it. It's only, only it takes me a minute to cut this tree. If you can't stand the looks, just skip forward about 20 seconds or so, if you don't care or whatever. This is a white oak veneer tree that I'm cutting. Number two on there is the second veneer tree on this landowner. That's kind of how they, when they get to a veneer candidate, they'll mark it on a number on it, uh, so you know which trees are the veneer trees. What the forester's calling a veneer tree. See, because the forester marks this stuff. There, junkie coming through there. The forester marks this stuff, you know, and then puts it up for sale. So you're trying to, when you're bidding on it something and uh, everything you're, you're trying to figure out what the forester's thinking and the forester tries to do his best to communicate that with whoever's bidding on the timber there's Raji his skitter's still going at the shop he's running a big grapple today has been for a while while well, they do his front rear end Which I want to thank thank a lot, thank you guys down at Herb for taking care of us. That Roger Skitter does turn out great in the end. Fantastic job, good people down at Herb. I'm gonna clean him up a bit, get them spurs off that thing, so it's more attractive to the veneer buyer. They gotta put these things in boxes to ship overseas and whatnot. So you kind of need to take the spurs or the spur roots off. That's what they call that, the spurs. You gotta take the spurs off the butt logs so they stack into a box better. You can get a tighter stack in a container box. What's going on right here? I'm getting up close to the house. There's some scraggly yard edge trees here, but I don't want to knock any of them down that don't have to go, really, because I still want them to get a good feel from the woods to their yard. I don't want it to be too open through there, unless I'm told otherwise, and nobody's told me otherwise, so I'm trying to 
do my best to keep that kind of intimate type of scenario there close to the house. It's a struggle to keep that, but I'm trying. It's so hard to do, and not complaining, but it's so hard to do this job the way I, just the way I want it done. You know, it, it makes it very tough to try to get through there. See, here's the thing. You're cutting trees that's leaning hard towards the outside, towards the sun. you got to get Brutus in there to do it with Brutus because Brutus has the strength to put them big trees where they go. Well, where you got to sit with Brutus to give them the, the big push to put these trees where they belong, you got to get your butt out there to the yard to get behind them to really give them a good shove. In doing so, you back your tracks out there and you run over, you got to move little trees out of the way that you don't really want to because I don't want them to make it easy to see down in the woods to so, so if they get coming near something, they're sitting there looking at them, well, look down here in your wood. You know, you don't want it to like that. But it, it's it's not simple to try to do this task here and, and, and keep the intrusive stuff away from the house there. Because like I said, these guys, this couple here, they, utilize, they really spend a lot of time in the woods. And I don't want to ding it. See, I, crappy looking sassafras and I don't need to be there that little bent son of a buck but if he's if I cut him and move him out of the way then you're going to open that up more so it's a catch 23 I didn't want to cut this stump because it had nails in it. But Keith asked me later, he's like, well, can you cut that stump? I was like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I can cut that stump. I, I, I got low enough it didn't tear up my blade or nothing. But a guy's got to watch, you know. You go to cutting nailly stuff, I mean, this daggone blade, to re-tooth this blade, to put the carbides back in this blade, you're talking... Well over a thousand dollars, like eleven hundred, twelve hundred, something like that, on Brutus. Now you can run steel teeth, but I can't run steel teeth on this hot saw because we're cutting grade timber. You got to get the wood cut, and when you're running steel teeth, they get dull so quick. You can't. You got to have that carbide to hold the edge, to keep that baby sawing and cutting through the wood instead of tearing the fibers because it's too dull to do its job. Not to mention the fact that your blade's dead all the time when you don't have a sharp saw, so you're sitting there waiting on the blade to build and that good mess. But to keep the long story down as short as I can get it, you gotta watch cutting Nelly stuff. You gotta watch cutting stuff with fence in it, or this or that or the other. You know.
through there but you want to still get to them okay yeah, i mean it could be up in here way so that's fine just down the line where it's so not in these this houses. trail should stay in good anyways you got a side by side or something don't you right oh, yeah okay. i'll get all that cleaned okay. up yeah yeah i'll clean all of it how's that is that okay through there I had really looked at it, over here. it turned out it i was pretty happy with the way everything went you're gonna cut that one lower too right that's not it's got fence in it i can it? though okay you want yeah. me to yeah and you want me to take out that sassafras? It's a pile of shit. It's just yeah. going up in your yard. Yeah. I got to cut another ash over there. I can get that on my way through. Yeah, we can get, especially get that paint just knock it down low. Okay. But, like but the canopy and stuff, what you all's going to see from the house and stuff, I'm happy with it. No, it's a big shock. It's a big change, yeah. but it's, yeah. it's not, like I told your dad, it's not a scaffold. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it'll help with one of Yeah. It won't take long. You won't. You'd be surprised how quick it heals itself. Yeah, this had real been cut forever, so. Yeah, it's obvious. All right, I'm gonna check on my core.
order for them. And White Oak's worth enough money, it's worth every bit of that. and then come in through that path and grab these trees out and then I'll throw these big wood trees up in there. Okay. There, can you all see the butts of them? Okay, so in this situation, me and Derek has made it to the southwest corner of Keith's place. And this road that I'm driving on is the main road for the rest of the landowners to be hauled out with Tiny. Derek got done with his part, and he's kind of wedged up here again, me, because we... The big daddy needed some room farther back. Or needed, excuse me, I'm watching this, I'm editing, I'm, I'm talking. Big daddy needs some, a little bit of time back there towards the back to get the infrastructure ready for hauling out of here with Tiny. So me and Derek, it's kind of clustered up here. As we go through this narrow section, coming off of Keith, onto the next landowner, as we head farther back. I thought this was a pretty neat shot to get to see Derek cutting side by side. So you got two hot saws working side by side. I thought that's cool. I usually try to, well, not just me, me and Derek, we usually try to set it up to where Derek's taking a better laying ground for his rig. And I'm trying to clean up the more nastier laying ground, the oddball laying stuff. And I got a wider throat in my saw so I can take on a little bit bigger wood than he can because I got the 24 and he's got the 22. But I'm going to tell you right now, a 22 ain't no slouch. I, re I really like these quadcos. Now he's got the uh, C type head and I got the B type head where my accumulation of bundling arms is down lower on mine than what they are in Derek's. 
works better for shoveling. Mine does, I think. Don't hold me to that. I might not know what I'm talking about. But I'm gonna trim up the spurs on this white oak here. It's another big, good white oak. My Derek's cutting there beside me. I'm gonna clean up the spurs on this thing. I'm try to start on it in the morning, tomorrow. I, after we get, well, excuse me, my brain skipped cog. Cut this wide open and then start past this area. We're about to wind down in the evenings. In the evening. And that's a little ash tree. We're kind of thinning out the ash here before the boar. Well, the boar's here. I've seen some boars in the wood there. So, trying to get this. There's junkyard off in the distance over there. They're trying to get this ash out of here, Brad is. Brad was the uh, forester on this project here. She's trying to get most of the food source out of here for that them daggone bugs. So, the little ash saplings and stuff that's coming on has a fighting chance of get, coming on you know, and getting itself established and stuff while the bug's more domesticating itself to the U.S. and getting a crazy run amok situation out of the bug. I don't know how to explain that. And right beside Derek over there is their yard heading over to their house, so we're still trying to that's the thing about this non-landowner job is it, 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 it was these are good people all these people are in the stress factor of trying to do the best you can because everybody on this that owns these properties pieces of property they all had a house so you're talking about basically you're basically working in somebody's backyard the whole time you're doing this I'll get off here and hush up while I finish working this little section. I end up cutting that white oak tree with Brutus, with, Brutus, with, with pudding, and pushing it with Brutus. And then I'm in a little hole right here beside where Derek's cutting. But I'm gonna shut up. This thing's almost over anyways. I'm gonna shut up and let y'all capture the end of it. Thanks everybody for watching. Leave me likes and comments and everything. If you got, if you got anything to say or ask or do I'll try to answer the best I could <clears throat> anybody needs any gear or anything like that shirts hats and that sort of mess go to loggerway.com I got a website links in the description down here you can go over there and shop in the store fill up your shopping cart hit the button and we'll send a shirt on your way you know we'll send your stuff on your way also got these eastern loggers calendars for sale check that out on the website uh that the money's going to charity i bought i forgot how many i bought now i think it was 20 magazines or whatnot or 20 of these calendars wonderful calendars i bought them for 20 bucks a piece and i think i'm selling them for 16. so each calendar 21 excuse me so each calendar you're, I'm paying five bucks, and you're paying sixteen for each calendar, and every bit of that goes to charity. It's it's for uh, cancer. That's what it's for. It's for gas cards and stuff like that to get people to treatment, to get the loggers to treatment and stuff like that. And, and it money it all goes to loggers, or and their family or what what. However that works out, I don't handle that, but I just want you all to know. 
from the Eastern Logger's calendar, none of that goes in my pocket at all. I done spend my bunt, my big wad buying these things, and I and I'm kind of having it set up to where you put a little bit in the pot, you put a decent amount in the pot for each counter, but I put mine in the pot buying the counters to start with. So we're all doing our part to uh, help this cancer situation. What a nasty deal that that old cancer is, you know. <laughs> not that's not funny. I'm just saying it's nasty, but we're we're handling it. But anyways, I'll shut up, quit rattling, get my get my butt off here. Thank you all for watching and spending time on Logger Way. Everybody, thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to hit the buttons and leave me a like, comment, stuff. Let me know what's up. Uh, uh, and to anybody that's wanting logger weight gear, go to loggerweight.com and uh, help yourself as a shop there. And uh, we got all that good mess. To take care of it. And uh, mostly just want to say thanks, everybody. Hope everybody has a good one later on.